Since the dawn of cinema, many filmmakers have been obsessed with creating realism in their films. In a medium full of vast fictional escapism, no matter how far some films remove us from reality, arguably the most valued ability of a filmmaker is the ability to depict an authentic sense of verisimilitude in a story that connects and engages with the audience. This is why out of all the incredibly creative subgenres of horror films, one has stood above the rest in terms of its unique ability to inspire a seemingly impossible yet horrifyingly logical basis for the audience to fear not just the reality of the film but their own reality in itself. This is the rise of found footage horror. One of the most agreed upon characteristics of the found footage technique is a style of filmmaking that utilises raw, unedited analogue video and diegetic sound to directly place the audience in the perspective of the characters, often in a setting isolated from urban society. Most footage is intentionally low quality, with the key principle being to create the illusion that the film's narrative is taking place in the real world. The first of these films dates back to the 1980 Italian Mondo film, Cannibal Holocaust, directed by Ruggiero Diodato. This was an incredibly controversial film, depicting graphic content and sexual assault, leading to it being banned in over 50 countries, and even landing the filmmakers in court over allegations that the footage was displaying genuine animal cruelty. The footage, however, was in reality a complete fabrication, portrayed with an unprecedented form of authenticity that was by far one of the most convincing illusions of reality most audiences had ever seen. Despite its controversies, this laid the groundwork for a new subgenre in horror film that would only really be realised in 1999 when directors Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez released arguably the most iconic found footage of all time, The Blair Witch Project. The film depicted a documentation of the experiences of three film students lost in a wood whilst being tormented by a mysterious supernatural force considered to be the infamous Blair Witch. Much like Cannibal Holocaust, the filmmakers employed the same guerrilla marketing strategies that have become a key trait of found footage. This included setting up missing persons reports for the actors who had worked on the film, creating a kind of folklore that the film's events were true recordings and had implications on the audience's own world. The film quickly secured screening deals with Artisan Entertainment and acted as the mainstream audience's first introduction to found footage. Over the years, more and more filmmakers began to experiment with this technique of making their films intentionally low budget to emulate a truer sense of authenticity in horror. This rise continued into the new century and in 2007, another success came for the now full-fledged subgenre. This was a film made again by low-budget independent directors, and was compiled as a series of documentations of supernatural happenings within a couple's new home. This was the film known as Paranormal Activity, directed by Oren Pelly. It became another landmark success, gaining acquisition from Paramount Pictures and creating a legacy of sequels, a relatively uncommon achievement for most found footage films. Throughout all these films, a standout feature of found footage seems to be its ability to impose the character's sense of lost, mentally destructive desperation onto the audience by using authenticity to create a genuine human connection between character and spectator. In a sense, these films seem close to home, immersed in a sense of plausibility uncommon for the horror genre. 
Part of the reason found footage has been able to connect with audiences so easily has been theorised to be connected with the 2001 September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center. This event triggered for the first time in history a mass availability of civilian recorded amateurish footage showing the terror of a real world tragedy. These accounts had a huge impact on the world of media and everyone who watched them, and considering the event to be recent in the minds of audiences during the rise of found footage, many scholars believe it to have evoked the same sense of believable fear and therefore catalyzed the impact of such films. Other explanations contributing to the rise of the subgenre would be due to its ability to be shot on a low budget. For example, as found footage horror became more popular due to the films previously mentioned, more amateur filmmakers began to see the deliberate low quality footage synonymous with the genre as a way to pass off low budget production value as more of a stylistic choice rather than a technical flaw. This created a viable option for independent filmmakers to shoot their films without the need for a substantial budget or studio funding. So exactly why has it been successful? Since the subgenre took hold, numerous theories have been proposed to explain the effect it has had on audiences. One idea being that the signature primitive nature of the recordings seems to evoke an almost nostalgic kind of dread in the audiences. For example, audiences in the early 2000s would have been familiar with VHS tapes and camcorders of classic home video that appeared to be cutting edge in the days before the smartphone. Therefore, one of the reasons why the analogue video production quality of found footage is so effective in bringing a sense of dread into audiences may be that the footage in itself appears to be a common and honest account of the everyday person. In contrast with so many studio produced horror films using classical filmmaking techniques, this instead creates the idea that the supposed filmmakers are naive to the conventional film form. This evokes the sense that the characters recording the footage, unlike typical movie directors, are not actively trying to scare audiences, but are instead simply documenting already terrifying and inexplicable events, despite some protagonists being film students to give more credibility to why the footage is being recorded in the first place. The grainy, unprofessional video also helps to intentionally obscure details of the exact events taking place in the film, and therefore create subjectivity around what the footage is actually showing the spectator. When watching found footage horror, we the audience are positioned into the context that we have either been shown or have personally found this footage, which thus invites audiences to put together and at least attempt to rationalise the events they witness when watching the seemingly authentic footage with logical explanations, or alternatively, details that give the footage away as fake. The true dread of the spectator therefore comes when these attempts are ultimately shattered, with most found footage horror films normally ending in a truly unexplicable event, such as the ending of the previously mentioned Paranormal Activity and Blair Witch Project. This type of ending therefore provides audiences with no logical explanation for any of their attempted rationalizations of what they have witnessed, as the footage abruptly cuts out, usually without any form of closure or credits. All we are left with as viewers is the presumably real account that the spectator cannot with evidence dismiss as entirely fictional, adding a subtle, dread-filled feeling of doubt over whether the account in question is really entirely a work of fiction. This thus demonstrates the genius concept of found footage horror, with its ability to push the limits of spectators' suspension of disbelief, with horrifying, often supernatural elements, and still manage to achieve plausibility in the otherwise entirely implausible footage. This idea of playing with the supposed truth in what the audiences are watching could also emanate from ideas of the time of postmodernism in cinema. Postmodernism, although it cannot so easily be defined, is the concept of rejecting and destabilizing 
any absolute version of truth or typical convention in art. This is apparent in postmodern horror movies such as Scream, Scary Movie and Shaun of the Dead. These are films that sought to subvert typical horror movies with a comedic self-awareness of its own conventions in the genre. While this led to new creative takes on horror films, it also arguably deconstructed any tension conveyed by classical horror movies and distanced audiences from any immersion with an inability to take anything seriously. And suddenly, along comes the found footage subgenre, arguably with the opposite effect to these postmodern satirical horror films. Instead of making the absurdity and lack of realism apparent, found footage horror films create a sense of hyperrealism so definitive and so authentic that the audiences find themselves not laughing as they would expect from horror movies at the time, but cowering in fear of the supposed implications of found footage horror. Other explanations for the inherent fear factor ingrained within these shaky, amateurish recordings could also be attributed to its apparent devolution into the essence of the unrefined, primitive films from the origins of cinema. Throughout the history of the horror genre, there seems to be a consistent reliance on outdated human-made constructs to evoke a sense of nostalgic fear in audiences. Whether it be in the form of an abandoned or forgotten doll, an old graveyard, or even, in the case of The Ring, an old VHS tape. This mysterious fear generated through the corruption of old and abandoned parts of society can perhaps be mapped on to the found footage subgenre as filmmakers continue to reject any technological advancement and deliberately shoot on low-tech, seemingly abandoned methods of recording video such as VHS and camcorders to evoke a similar sense of eerie, corrupted nostalgia over old analogue film techniques. Some of the most notable films we have referenced so far, whilst still being relevant, are around 20 to 30 years old. The subgenre may be popular, it may be expansive, however it seems particularly interesting that no new found footage horror films have made any notable impact on mainstream cinema since the genre's original debut, suggesting that there has been something consistently halting the progression of the subgenre in the modern day. This could be for a number of reasons. For example, the shaky and erratic camera movements of found footage may prove too challenging for audiences to focus on without becoming nauseous, especially on a cinema screen. This was certainly the case in the premiere of Cloverfield, the 2008 science fiction film directed by Matt Reeves, where a number of cinemas were forced to display warning notices of nausea and sickness outside screenings when the film was first released. This is a somewhat rare example of the problems that can arise with the conversion of found footage horror film into mainstream content, even if the film garners the same attention as a mainstream Hollywood blockbuster. The problems for the subgenre do not end with distribution, however. Another point we have touched upon is how Cannibal Holocaust was originally mistaken as showing genuine murder in the film. Snuff films, video recordings of real murder, are obviously highly illegal, and with the already mentioned hyper-realistic quality of found footage horror, audiences can be easily deceived into viewing the footage as authentic, which can lead to serious legal implications if there is no evidence to refute this. This has been the case for a number of films, including August Underground, where director Fred Vogel was arrested entering Canada on suspicion of transporting obscene material. The obscene material, however, turned out to be simply copies of the completely fictional found footage horror film, perhaps doing its job just a little too well. Films, like all art, are generally designed to imitate reality in some way. Interestingly though, the legal questions surrounding these films can be seen as one of the instances of the imitations of the real world becoming subject to the consequences of the real world as well. These problems surrounding the use of found footage within horror calls into question if a once fresh and innovative new subgenre has reached its peak evolution and has simply died out. 
Perhaps the mystique surrounding found footage has faded and these glitchy, primitive video documentations will go ironically unfound and buried to audiences in an age of mass digitization. But perhaps there is evidence the subgenre has moved on into the digital age itself. Whilst found footage horror most probably will never be dominant in mainstream cinema, other methods of exhibiting these films have become more suitable, with the subgenre finding its audience online as many amateur found footage horror films have become prevalent on video platforms such as YouTube and Shudder. These platforms have arguably saved the subgenre, making low budget films accessible to viewers all around the globe without the need for studio funding entirely, even if it does make filmmakers reliant on advertisement revenue to make any kind of profit from their productions. However, the subgenre has always been seen as a both realisable and highly effective method of generating a new sense of fear in horror that no other subgenre has ever managed to accomplish. And now, more found footage films are being produced more than ever via independent teams and digital platforms. Therefore, even with the analogue film techniques and stylistic signatures of the medium seemingly being outdated by the advanced technical standards of our time, found footage horror proves to remain a relevant and extraordinary subgenre that will forever leave audiences questioning the very nature of truth in cinema itself.